Hi YouTube, I'm Ali. Welcome to Gaming Indoors, a channel that's fast becoming more and more dedicated to helping you make games. Now, today we're going to take a small break from that collective activity we engaged in. That sounds very odd. Uh, that job we're involved in. No, that sounds even weirder. The task of building a game together. We're taking a break from that. That's my wife. She doesn't realise I'm recording this. So I'm going to stop. Now, we're going to take a little break from our current activity of building a board game together. By the way, I want to take a couple of moments out just to say a huge thank you for all those people that are supporting the activity. There have been some amazing, amazing ideas out there, all of which I am taking on board and trying to sort of build up a little bank that we can reference later. Um, there is still plenty of time to vote for how we should start shaping this uh, board game. And if you haven't already voted, let me explain exactly how you do that, because I think there has been some confusion. Um, you need to pop along to the channel, go along to the community tab, and then you should see the voting buttons just there. Click on the one you want and away we go. While you're there, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and like this, this video uh, if possible. I thought I'd just squeeze that in there. now. Today I'm bringing you my chat with Ivan Alexiev, a great guy who's gone from being a board game designer to a professional playtester. He's going to share his tips and tricks about getting your game playtested, what to look for, what not to look for. No, that doesn't make sense. What to look for and what to avoid. There we go. Um, who you should interact with, what kind of questions you should be asking, and the whole process of playtesting in order to build a better game. Stick around because there's a ton of information in this video, which is why it's quite a long one. Uh, and I've also stuck in some little bonus bits right at the end. So let's start with an introduction. This is Ivan. Hi, I'm uh, Ivan Alexiev. I am uh, from playerlayer.net, where we do, I, I host a podcast there. Um, we do professional playtesting uh, for your games. We try and, you know, give you the best feedback and we wor work with people to kind of get their games to where they want them to be, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> Ivan, are you interested in speaking about board games by any chance? I'm very happy to talk about board gaming. It's one of my favorite things to talk about, and uh, I might even talk about it a bit too much. Uh, I started in board gaming as a kid. It was something that me and my brother did uh, when I was maybe from like eight to like 12 years old. Then we had a long hiatus, and maybe four years ago, we came back into board games uh, with the game Scythe, uh, which I'm sure many of uh, your viewers are familiar with. And we played that game like every week. Uh, and we just started talking about, because as kids we tried in make, making games, so we just started talking about uh, how we want to start again, you know? And uh, and we did, and uh, our, we designed a game, we entered a couple of contests, uh, we uh, actually did quite well then, we went to Essenspiel, and, uh, and since then, you know, we uh, now have a company that does playtesting and just, you know, things have escalated a little bit, so now I get to talk about board games more often. What we realized early on with our uh, first game is that uh, games need playtesting and you need to fi figure out ways to, to test your games. Uh, meaning that uh, what I am now like more familiar with and I wasn't back then is uh, like testing your game with, uh, with different groups of people is it depends a lot on the people who are testing it as well as on the game itself and it depends on how you present your game and that's really important to learn when you start playtesting your game it's not just about um, getting the rules down getting uh the game to a, a place where it's fun it's also about understanding how to pre best present your game so let's start right at the beginning what exactly is playtesting playtesting is uh, basically you, you've you've already gotten to a point where you've taken a game out of your head and you need to show it to people uh, to get some feedback. I actually, um, I talked to, there, there's a designer called Joe Slack who um, talks about how all games are a community process. They're, they're made by a community. And I, I, for one, believe that. And I found through playtesting, you know, dozens, maybe hundreds of games at this point, I found that uh, the, the best games are usually, you know, they're they're cooperative in their making, <laughs> not not necessarily co-op games, but um, uh, but they're they're made by a team of people, and I, I find that playtesting is one of those ways uh, where everyone can chime in with their their ideas. And of course, uh, you're always going to need, as the designer, to you know figure out which of those ideas stick, um, and which ones don't. Okay, so when exactly should I start playtesting? 
I do believe that it's like as soon as possible, but there are like two trains of thought. Um, I know a lot of people like Bruno Cathalo, for example, um, who's an amazing designer. I'm sure you've uh, played some of his uh, games. Uh, he says that he actually keeps the ga games in his head for a very long time until he knows exactly what he wants to kind of achieve. He, he tries doing the whole thing mentally and then putting it on paper when he knows he's already gone through most of the problems that might arise. Whilst uh, me, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm more towards the other train of thought, which is, um, you know, get a rough idea of what you want, um, scrap together a prototype and get it in front of people, see how it actually plays. Um, and then again, you're kind of pruning it, you know, you're, um, you're taking those those wide ideas and, and and simplifying them. So like the 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 two, if I can say the the two ways, or one is um, kind of like you're growing your game, uh, you're adding to it and adding to it. The other one is kind of you're throwing out a bunch of stuff that you want, and then you're seeing what actually fits. Now straight off the bat, I love that as a response. Uh, it shows a depth of knowledge that I didn't doubt for a second Ivan had, um, but I loved the fact that there wasn't a single answer. It made me think about who I was as a designer, and it would probably help to better engage with playtesters if I knew that from the start. Am I the kind of person that probably needs to spend a little bit more time refining what I have before I share, or do I really gain the benefit of immediately going out and checking the idea to see whether or not uh, it's worthwhile uh, in any form at all. Now, that said, I did want to know whether there was anyone I should be avoiding uh, to go and share my game with, i.e. were there people or types of people that I should really stay away from when it came to playtesting? Well, in those early stages, I would say you shouldn't really avoid anyone because I'm sure that you don't. your, your idea of your game is very raw in the beginning. And what you want to do is try and make it more crisp and understand it better. But uh, I would say test with whoever you can. And um, like at, at first, I, I would say, you know, uh, reach out to friends or family members. Right now, it's more difficult because, um, of course, we're kind of stuck at home. Uh, so there, but there are still communities out there. There is uh, t Tabletop Simulator is a great, great resource. I think it's the, the easiest way um, for you to get your prototype from like Photoshop onto um onto the the simulator and there there's uh groups there's groups on discord and kind of find playtesters that way you can reach out to us we have a website where we we have a group of designers and playtesters who um test out games and let me think other other than that i, I would say go to board game cafes and uh, bring up bring your game with you <laughs> Now, one of the things that I think I'm guilty of, and I think maybe a few people out there are too, is that I don't want to hear bad news. What happens if I share my game? Uh, is someone going to just say it's terrible and crush my spirit and stop me being creative? Has he had any experience himself of someone bringing a game that's so bad that he's just had to say, no, this is terrible? I think it's really important to um, face your fear. And um, it, it is kind of, there is that kind of stage fright. Like, uh, I, I really love it. And lots of people, I'm sure you've heard the, um, the metaphor made that your game is like your baby. And uh, there's like, there's no way that you're not gonna be biased towards your own game and that you're not gonna uh, love it and hope and want everyone to love it. But um, I think you need to kind of bring it out and see what, what other people think. And then with that objective opinion, um, see if you can make it better. I have had some games that are uh, like, first of all, that are that are not in my taste. I've had some games that need a lot of work, uh, which means like everything from the rulebook, just an un a game which isn't uh, easy to understand. Um, but like genuinely, when I go into a playtest or when we go into a playtest, my aim is find the best thing in the game. Find like I said, that idea of the designer, like what's making him want to do this, want to make this game. And there, it, you'd be surprised. There's something in there always. There's, there's always something in there or like where you can see like, this is what's pulling that designer to make that game. And you've got to, I, I try and find that. And I try to look for what's best in that game. Okay, so I'm ready to hand my game over to playtesters. How should I do that? What format should I hand it over to them as? Should it be cut out bits of cardboard or should I spend some money on artwork and making it look pretty? 
It really depends on who you're showing your game with. If you're showing it to people who are very used to seeing um, raw prototypes, I don't think it's a problem to go in with whatever you've got. On the other hand, if it's your friends and you're kind of um, <laughs> making them, you know, have a, an unpleasant time when they just want to play games, I think you should uh, avoid that. Um, and you know, uh, <laughs> figure out a different way. I know, I know, lots of designers um, like Shem Phillips, for example. What he does is he he tests almost everything in house, and he, he even said uh, that like uh, he tries out AIs against each other. So he does a lot of the playtesting by himself. Um, and that's that's something that uh, if your game is is uh, it's, if it's possible to do like multi-handed tests and stuff like that, you should definitely try it out. That's just if if, if you want to play with multiple hands, like you're 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 you as the designer are playing as uh, several players, um, or if you've got a solo game, like right, right now I'm working on a solo game where I, I can actually test it as much as I want. You know, uh, again, I, I I prefer having some other uh, play testers even in a solo game because. Um, I, I tend to get into, or everybody tends to get into their own kind of play style. And um, after some time, inevitably, uh, if your game does well, you're gonna see, you know, um, play styles which uh, I'm, I'm guessing you 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 didn't anticipate um, a lot of the time. One thing that I've always wanted to know is how much interaction I should actually have with my play testers. Should I be guiding them every step of the way? If you're going in and you know you're gonna be part of that play test. Um, that is something that's going to affect the playtest, first of all. Um, going in with a notebook and uh, and a pen is perfect. I, I would recommend you have at least one page written out in that notebook before you even start. Um, where um, th Things that you think, uh, that you're curious about before the playtest, uh, I would say rec uh, write down everything that um, that you want to know before the, like have the playtest kind of planned out, but when you get there, um, and actually sit down at that table with that notebook and some questions that you have about your particular game. I'd say um, try not to get in people's way too much because you want, I, I know that you as the designer, you want to make it a really good experience and you want it to, you want your game to shine. Um, but see, uh, I, I would say listen more than you, um, than you kind of, than leading the game, than just leading the game, you know? Uh, when you're telling people how to play, Listen for those questions, because those questions that uh, people tend to ask, that's what's going to go on a reference sheet, and it's going to make your game look a lot better <laughs> for your next play, uh, play test or you know a play read. Um, look for um, the terminology that players use. Like uh, you, as the designer, usually have terminology, and your players, if if it doesn't fit with them, you you really need to think about maybe changing changing it. If, if everyone again and again is calling a certain piece uh, different from what you want it to be called, I think that's, um, you know, it's a, it's a small thing, but I think that's something worth um, thinking about changing. Again, fantastic advice. I think it might be worthwhile also understanding what the playtester should be bringing to the table. What should you do if you are a playtester? What should I be looking for as a designer in my playtesters? For sure, um, you really, as a playtester, you need to be comfortable giving feedback. Um, that means if you don't like something, um, just say it. And you know, it, it's uh, this is this is where what I mentioned earlier. How being there as a designer, there's a great article about it. I'll, I can send it to you after. But being there as the designer changes the playtest, and part of why it changes it is because people are kind of um, generally afraid to you know comment on somebody else's uh, work that, um, you know, especially negatively. Um, and I think as a playtester, first of all, as a designer, you need to make that space um, comfortable for, for your playtesters and make it all right for them to kind of judge your game because that's what you want them to do. And that's most of the time, that's the best thing that they can do is, um, you know, of course, don't overdo it. You know, don't don't go in looking for flaws when uh, when, when there aren't any, you know, it's, it's, sometimes you need to accept this is a good game, <laughs> which, <Sure. laughs> which, uh, which uh, is the case, you know, so, like sometimes if you think something works well or you don't have any positive feedback, yeah, you should, you know, uh, you, you shouldn't try and think, think up of just anything. But um, as a playtester, um, maybe the key things are um, 
listen, li- listen to um, the, the designer. Try and try and understand what his idea is uh, for the game, because a lot of the time, the physical prototype is not to where the idea for the game is. If that makes any sense. Um, so, like, try and figure out what the designer wants to achieve, and see if there's any way that you can um, you can help him to get closer to his vision. We talked about a page of what we wanted our playtesters to go through, key elements or key points. If there are questions there, when do I bring them up? If I have questions like that towards the playtesters, I leave them until the end. That's a personal um, thing for me. I, I want th- their experience of the game not to be seen as work. If that, yeah. Uh, like I, I want it to be a, ge- a genuine experience, and I want um, a- afterwards to give them maybe like a couple of questions. Um, and then I, I think that also just gives you a a good idea of, of what they think of your game or what they remember of your game, um, not like while they're doing it also. So uh, I, I would go for giving it to them at the end just so that um, so just so they're not focusing on that whilst they're playing the game. You want them to just play the game. Now, one of the things I, I keep hearing again and again is, how do I know that what they're saying, the playtesters are saying back to me, is actually valid and is actually worthwhile considering uh, to, to take on board? Um, how do I know what they say is right? Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny question because uh, it's, um, it's something that's subjective and there are people for certain games. And I, I always say if uh, your game is loved and hated, it's better than if it's uh, kind of in the middle with everyone. So um, I think if somebody comes to you and gives you a point like that, you should definitely know about it. But it's uh, like I said earlier, it's your decision uh, what stays in the game as the designer. So you can let you can let it influence. You can have that in mind and know that uh, there are probably if if that one person said it, there's probably other people. Uh, when you eventually pu- publish your game, there's probably other people who are going to share that um, you know that thought process, or they're they're also not going to like that. But I don't think your aim should be going for um, something that's for everyone. Now, once again, guys, these are questions that bother me as a first-time game designer, uh, and they may be similar to the kinds of concerns you have. In fact, a lot of my questions are based on not just my fears or concerns, but also things I've picked up from the comments. And that's where I want to just take another little time out to say that if you do have questions or concerns about playtesting, the comments is where you need to raise them, because then I can take them back to Ivan, and we can perhaps have him back on the show to, to address them directly. We have an opportunity here as people who are learning to build board games or creating board games to actually ask some of those that are really, really in the know and have been there and done it. Uh, So I really want to do hear back uh, in the comments if you do feel that there's a couple of things you want to discuss or you want to ask or you have some questions around. I really don't mind doing the research and trying to find out for you guys. Anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about another concern I have, which is this game is exactly the same as another game. What do you do if you hear that? If you haven't played that game, I would say go and play that for sure. Um, I had a similar comment a couple of months ago that a a game I was working on is uh, similar to Spirit Island. And I went and played Spirit Island and I got a bunch of great ideas. I hadn't uh, played it before. And I think um, that that kind of gives you a place where you to like to learn from. And I don't don't think you should uh, be avoiding your game being like other games. I think you should, in the end, it's not gonna be another game. I feel I, I feel like every game I play, I've never said this is the exact same game, you know, unless it's a re-theme or something. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I don't think that should be your worry at all. And of course, hand in hand with that concern is the possible concern around theft. Will playtesters steal my idea? Um, but like stealing ideas in this industry, it's not really a big thing because um, First of all, the designer usually is the one who has the passion and the, <laughs> the nerves to actually deal with the project because it's uh, it can be you know, quite tense and it's, it's a lot of work. Um, also, your idea is usually not worth that much until it's a finished product. Now, one other thing that we should talk about the playtesters themselves, and that is around their makeup. Um, do I go for any specific age groups or types of people? For sure, and I'm very happy that you brought this up because um, one thing I've noticed can be a problem, or one thing that 
really needs to be addressed early on is learning who your game is for, learning your audience. But once you know your audience, which is actually not an easy thing to do by any means, like you know, finding those people. But once you do know your audience, um, I think the testing group is best. It's best if you include both members uh, who are from your audience and both uh, ones who are not, because you again, like I said. When you're testing, it's kind of like a mini version of having your game published. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, uh, you have a very small group of people who know about your game, and um, you kind of want all like different demographics. I think that's the word. All all different types of people um, in that group, so that you know kind of know what, what to expect. Because once you publish it, it's the same thing, just larger scale. Okay, I know we're hopping around a bit, but that's how these conversations happen. They are more conversations than they are interviews, really. Let's go back to the actual questions. What kind of things should I be asking in my questions? What kind of things should I be concentrating on? It is certainly like, it depends on your game. Like questions that I've seen very often um, designers come to me with as a, as a playtester. Uh, does the theme fit the mechanics or does the setting fit the mechanics? Um, does if, if that's what your goal is again um is there something that you forget or that you forgot to do because lots of times um like i recently played a game where there's a small phase where you you kind of reset the game and uh the problem is that it's it that phase was like really easy to forget and you could continue playing without resetting and you wouldn't even know it because it's uh, it's just kind of randomizing so like is there any, anything that players forget because if there is that means that you really need to simplify it and um kind of ha have it either re reiterate on it or iterate on it more is that the word uh like have it more times in the rule book um or in a more prominent or in a different place in the rule book that's something that you should definitely think about like how you organize your rule book um but um that is something so what if people forget things uh, is one thing uh does the theme fit the mechanics um i get questions lots of times i get questions just uh was the game fun <laughs> like like stuff like that you know oh, i'm interrupting here because what he's about to say here i think is absolute gold pay special attention the question that I learned to ask, and I learned this uh, maybe recently, only a month ago, but I think it's a genius question that you should definitely ask, is um, if there was 10% of this game that needs to go, what would it be? And then you do the opposite. You do, is if there's 10% of this game that shouldn't t be touched at all, it should uh, go out like that, what is that? So like those two things, if uh, you're getting the same answers, I, 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 I think you, um, I think those are really good questions. All right, so we've got our playtest happening. I know who's turning up. I know the kinds of questions I'm gonna ask. How many of these things should I do? In a typical uh, life cycle of a game, how many, many playtest sessions am I expecting to have to go through? Again, it depends on the style of the designer. Um, when we started out designing games, uh, along with my brother, we made a lot of prototypes and that's that's just the way that we did it. And we would kind of play test a prototype a couple of times. We'd realize what we need to change. We'd change a bunch of stuff and then go back and test again. And we've done that. I think we have a game that has like 15 or 16 prototypes, which is, you know, a lot for a game that um, we've been working on for like a year. Uh, so that's like a prototype a month. But if you're doing a second, third, fourth play test, um, then you should already know what you're testing for. Cause you know how the, the first couple of play tests went uh, or sessions went and um, like those, uh, you, you should have kind of, this time I'm testing this specific thing and how it uh, interacts with everything else. If it's something, if you've brought something new in, focus on that. Um, if you've taken something else out or something old out, uh, focus on how the game is doing without it. Is it, uh, um, is it doing better or worse? And um, and the other thing I want to mention, because it can be really, uh, it can feel really bad if you keep doing the process again and again, and you feel like your game isn't doing, uh, isn't getting better. And I've seen that a lot, and I've <laughs> I've certainly experienced it as well. Um, and I think like you need to try and change something. Like when when you're plateauing. 
Um, I, I personally don't recommend writing it out and just, um, just keep play testing, keep pushing. Cause if you're play testing the same with the same people and the same things are going wrong, you need to either find different people. That's, that's one change, you know, change the group, change the setting of people playing it. Um, you're going to need to change something in the game. Um, you're going to need to like, even if you're like very attached to something, I think if you're plateauing, you really need to change something and then go back. And even if it's worse after after the change, you're going to learn more about your game that way. When it comes to the groups of playtesters that I'm now affiliated with, should I be going to different kind of playtesters each time, or should I be sticking with the same group? Both. You should have groups where um, who have who who know your game in depth. Like I, I usually have one main group, and the main group is you know usually somebody who I can easily go to, and then. Uh, usually towards like later stages, I want to um, kind of get it out and get it played by as many people as possible and see all of those different reactions. Um, so I kind of know what, what I'm working with a bit better. Uh, but I don't want to do it too early because if I do it too early, um, I can I can kind of just push people away from the game if it's uh, if it's at a place where you know you haven't found the fun of the game yet. Now, this was a great segue into the world of fun, I thought. Um, see, one of the questions I think as a designer I want to know from my playtesters is simply whether or not they thought the game was fun. Was there a way that uh, Ivan could classify fun? Was there, was there a definition? Did he give feedback in his own playtesting sessions around whether or not the game was fun? I think... Um... You, again, I'm going to say it for the eighth time, maybe, you as the designer need to uh, kind of find the fun in your game. And uh, you can read, like, Jamie Stegmaier talks a lot about uh, find, finding the fun in your game and that usually your game has a... There's, there's a, a time when your game hasn't found its fun yet. And uh, but w w when you find it, then that, that's a very good thing. And then you need to kind of isolate it if you can. I, th I think a game like um, Ticket to Ride, for example, does so well because it gives you a very specific goal. It's, it's very fun to have a goal and a way to accomplish it, and then putting obstacles in the way, because you don't want it to be too easy there. Now again, I thought that answer was fantastic. It gave me a, a whole bunch of questions, unfortunately, in my head about the concept of fun, and made me think I really need to go and spend a little bit more time just investigating that, uh, probably for my own benefit there. But I think understanding where the fun comes uh, in a game is something I really would like to research and explore. Hmm. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about a couple of other elements, uh, which is the rulebook and uh, testing of it. Um, something called blind testing that I've heard bounced around a number of times. What exactly is that and when is it a good time to do it? Basically, blind testing is you sit down people or sit down playtesters with the rulebook and nothing else. Uh, and it would be best if they have a video camera as well so you can see it later. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, they read through the rulebook. That's what they do. They read through the rulebook and play through the game. And at that point, um, I wouldn't actually be concerned so much with mechanics and all of that um, if, if, you, if you feel good with the game. At that point, you're looking at, um, are they calling, again, are they calling everything the way that uh, it's called in the rulebook? Uh, are, like, are they playing the game correctly is what you're mainly looking for. I would say that it's something that you should look at towards the end of, of your game. You already know, and th this is something that um, I heard from Shem Phillips, who's also been on your show, yep. is he says that he doesn't do any blind testing until he's finished the game, until he knows how everything works. And all you're testing for is, does the rulebook um, uh, relay that information to play testers? Will they be able to learn the rulebook or learn the game through the rulebook? So you're basically just testing the rulebook. Now again, I'm going to interrupt this uh, just to say that Ivan then went on to talk about rulebooks. And again, I think there's a great insight here. He says some really clever key points about uh, creating rules. I am going to be interviewing someone actually specific on the topic of rulebooks, but that's uh, for a later date. For now, take away the nugget of gold that's revealed here. Uh, there's one, one thing I really love in rulebooks as a player, not not so much even as a playtester designer, I love a rulebook uh, that presents the game in a way where you can start playing um, while you're reading the rules. Because like sometimes, uh, I'm not calling out any names, but uh, <laughs> I've tested some games with some very, very long rulebooks, and they tell you how to win in the end of the rulebook. And that's, that's something you cannot do because you're reading through all this stuff and you have no idea what your goal is. So again, you have to put the goal in the very front of the rulebook. Like that's a small thing. 
um, but it's an important thing because if, if they know, okay, we need um, X points to win the game. All right, so I'm reading this to figure out ways to get points. Or if we learn, okay, we lose the game if um, this deck of cards runs out. Okay, so we're, um, we're going into this trying to make this deck last longer. So you, uh, if you put that goal in, in people's minds in the beginning of, um, of the rulebook, it's a very, it's a very different process reading the rulebook. Um, I don't know if, if, if you're curious uh, and want to try reading a rulebook for fun. I don't know how many of your uh, your listener or your uh, your audience would do that, but uh, read a rulebook where you don't know what the goal is, and it'll be so much more confusing. Now, once again, we've reached that point where I should have stopped talking about 25, 30 minutes ago, uh, but we were just chatting and enjoying uh, the exploration of playtesting in, in, in board games uh, to the point that we, I think we spoke for about an hour and a half or something like that. Um, I asked the obvious question, the question I ask in all my interviews to close things out, which was, if you had one piece of advice, what would it be? This is what Ivan said. Right, so I, I would say sticking to your um, your guns. Just find out what you're good at and find out what you're not good at. And um, I think I've, I've said it before once and I was very proud of my statement. It was um, uh, know your strengths and find your allies. Well, that means understand if you're good at doing like mechanics for board games, um, focus on that. Find, you know, and if, if you learn that you're not good at doing graphic design, find somebody who's uh, who can help you out with that find um and, and this goes back to my point about community that's why i think it's really important because it's i'm not going to say it's impossible but it's very rare that somebody can do everything at a, like a high level and if you want to make like a truly good product at the end it's not just uh, mechanics it's not just graphic design it's not just artwork um it's not just marketing you know it's it's you need to make that product and so few people can do all of them at a high level. And I think you shouldn't, I, I don't I don't think it should be your goal to try that. I think what you should do is find your strengths. Um, of course, you know, make projects and uh, like that goes without saying work on your, your games, um, but find out what you're really good at. And, um, and then ask other people who are good at things that you're not good at because First of all, you're going to learn from them. You're going to become better at that thing that they do for you. <laughs> and uh, you're, you're going to get an eye for it. Even if you don't become better at it, you're going to be, get an eye for it. You're going to see um, this is what good graphic design looks like. You're going to see um, like another great thing you can do is ask around. There's like a, a bunch of forums on Board Game Geek or on Facebook. There's like Board Game Design Lab is a great community for it. You can um, ask people what they think of a certain uh, mechanic of certain graphic design of certain artwork. So I think personally, that's that's the best advice is don't hoard your game. Don't, because um, I've, I've seen uh, that like kill games. You're just strangling them by, uh, by, by kind of, by loving them so much that you don't want to uh, share them with anyone. I would say don't do that. Your game needs to, um, Need, needs more people, and the the, the more people that uh, help out, the more exciting the project begin, becomes. Uh, the more you want to work on it, because you see, like, when you're, because if you're doing something all by yourself, you can kind of, again, you can plateau, and you can sit there, and, and at some point, you're not at your best. You know, today I've uh, I, I woke up late, I didn't do this, whatever, and your your game doesn't make any progress. Whilst if you're with, uh, if you've got an, another couple of people who are kind of. Um, have the same idea or are working on the same thing, you know, you can pick each other up and you can uh, hold each, each other accountable. And it's going to become more likely that your game is going to become a good uh, product, you know, a finished thing and uh, something that you can really be proud of as a group of people. <laughs> now, one of the things I really liked about Ivan was once again, he was an incredibly humble individual. Tons of knowledge, tons of passion for the hobby, but very, very keen just to keep uh, his own merits on the down low. I urge you strongly to go out and check playerlayer.net if you haven't already done so. He's got an amazing podcast uh, where he interviews some really stand-up folk, amazing folk in the industry. He's already mentioned a few of them there. I think Bruno's been mentioned, Sam Phillips has been mentioned. Um, uh, Joe Slack, who's written the definitive book, I think it's my top book choice for learning about board game design. Um, 
and I haven't spoken to them all. And he's worked with them all. So I, I do think you really need to go check that out. I'll put links at the bottom. Uh, please do go and check that out. He's also got currently got a game, a solo game called The Satchel on his website, which you can download for a tiny fee. I think it's give what you want. Uh, print and play, great solo game. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm being a bit hypocritical. I will go and try it though. I will donate and try it uh, uh, shortly. But uh, yeah. I really enjoyed, once again, uh, speaking with Ivan. I want to say a huge thank you uh, to Ivan for giving up his time. Uh, it was a Saturday, so uh, I'm always thankful. But once again, he gave away his weekend to speak to little on me. So I'm very, very thankful for that. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Don't forget, we are building our own. If you're new to the channel, we are building our own uh, board game collectively. And if you want to have part in that, you can do simply by voting on the major decisions about what shapes it. Uh, go do that uh, via the channel. Uh, Subscribe if you haven't already done so. But for now, as always, I want you to look after yourselves, play as many games as you can, get in those uh, creative juices working and get in those ideas uh, while lockdown still remains. Uh, I'm rambling now, so I shall stop. Take care, guys. Bye.